One thing that I often get asked about when I'm working with clients who've been through workplace bullying, especially narcissistic bullying, is why people often side with a bullying boss when they know what they're doing is wrong. Of course, there are lots of different dynamics at play here and it can be really confusing when you're going through it. How can people side with someone who's bullying someone else? It seems completely incomprehensible. In this video, I'll explore the complex reasons why people side with narcissistic bosses, shedding light on workplace realities that contribute to it and offer some insights into the potential impacts and also some coping strategies. I'm Jo Banks. I've been a professional executive business coach for 15 years and I'm sharing what I know. The narcissistic bullying boss. I know I've spoken about narcissistic traits in previous videos, but firstly, let's do a quick recap of the narcissistic behaviours we often see in bullying bosses. Number one, charismatic manipulation. Narcissistic bosses often exhibit charismatic qualities that can be alluring. Many have an initial charm and a persuasive communication style that can be attractive to employees, making it challenging to recognise manipulative behaviours beneath the surface. In addition, we don't expect people to be manipulative, so we aren't necessarily looking out for it. Number two, power dynamics. The inherent power dynamics within organisations often create an environment where employees may fear retribution or career consequences if they go against the narcissistic boss. This is extremely common. Siding with the bully may be perceived as a survival strategy within this type of power structure. Number three, selective favouritism. Narcissistic bosses may employ tactics of selective favouritism, pitting employees against each other for their approval. Some employees may side with the boss in an attempt to secure favour and protect themselves from becoming targets. Number four, illusion of success. Narcissistic leaders often create an illusion of success around themselves. Employees may align with the boss in the hopes of being associated with this perceived success, even if it comes at the expense of others. Individual motivations for siding with a narcissistic boss. As you can imagine, there are numerous reasons why co-workers may side against you in favour of their abusive boss. Doesn't make it right though. Number one, survival instincts. Employees may choose to align with a narcissistic boss out of fear of retaliation. The fear of losing your job, facing humiliation or experiencing professional consequences can be a powerful motivator for siding with the aggressor. Number two, desire for approval. Narcissistic bosses often have a knack for providing conditional approval. Employees seeking validation and recognition may align with the boss in an attempt to secure positive feedback and acknowledgement. Number three, manipulation and gaslighting. Narcissistic bosses excel at manipulation and gaslighting, distorting reality to their advantage. Employees may be led to believe that their boss's actions are justified further aligning with their perspectives. Remember, as part of their manipulation and self-preservation, narcissists rarely show their true colours to everybody. They are often very selective in who they choose to bully and how they do it. Number four, ingrained company culture. 
In workplaces with a pervasive, toxic culture, employees may become desensitized to narcissistic behaviors. Siding with the boss might be a result of normalized toxic patterns that are perceived as the norm within the organization. I have a video on toxic work environments, which are unfortunately really common, particularly in certain industries. I'll leave the link below. Workplace structures that foster alignment. Number one, lack of reporting mechanisms, limited channels for complaints. In organisations with inadequate reporting mechanism or a lack of transparency, employees may feel powerless to address narcissistic bullying behaviour. The absence of safe avenues for expressing concerns can contribute to employees aligning with the bully. Number two, perceived career advancement, professional opportunism. Employees may perceive aligning with a narcissistic boss as a strategic move for career advancement. The belief that loyalty to the aggressor can lead to preferential treatment and career opportunities may drive such alliances. Number three, isolation and alienation, divide and conquer strategies. Narcissistic bosses love to use divide and conquer strategies, isolating employees and creating an environment of distrust. Fearing being alienated, employees may align with the boss as a means of self-preservation in a fractured work environment. I've written about the evolutionary need to be connected to the group in a previous video. Again, I'll leave the link below. Belonging to a group is an evolutionary throwback to when being cast out of the tribe meant almost certain death. Therefore, being part of the tribe is deeply ingrained in our DNA, which is why the pain of being rejected shows up in the same parts of the brain as physical pain. Number four, cognitive dissonance. When confronted with a narcissistic boss's behaviour, individuals may experience cognitive dissonance. In other words, mental discomfort that results from witnessing beliefs, values or attitudes that conflict with their own. To reduce the discomfort, they may align with the boss's actions, convincing themselves that the bullying is justified or acceptable within the organisational context. This is a big one. I see situations where I know the employee is an inherently good person, but convinces themselves that what their boss is doing is right because it's too uncomfortable to believe the opposite. Impacts on workplace culture and individuals. Number one, erosion of trust. The alignment of some employees with a narcissistic boss can erode trust within the workplace. Co-workers may become wary of each other, hindering collaboration and fostering a toxic environment. Number two, silencing of dissent. Siding with a narcissistic boss may silence opposing opinions. Employees who would otherwise raise concerns or propose alternative solutions may choose to conform to avoid repercussions. Number three, increased stress and anxiety. If you're caught in the crossfire of a toxic workplace where alliances with a narcissistic boss are formed, you may experience heightened stress and anxiety. The fear of reprisal and the negative impact on your mental health can be significant. Number four, decline in employee engagement. A workplace with a narcissistic bullying boss and employees aligning with them may see a decline in overall employee engagement. The toxic atmosphere can lead to disengagement, apathy and a lack of commitment to organisational goals. What to do about it? In many of my previous videos, I've discussed the various steps you can take if you believe that you're being bullied. Keep details and records of any instances. Inform HR and senior management. Get some external support, therapy or coaching. Set strong boundaries 
and use the grey rock technique, which I mentioned in a previous video. Finally, practice self-care. I'm not going to go into lots of detail on those here because I've covered them in detail in other videos, but I do suggest watching my recent Flying Monkeys video that explains how narcissistic bosses use others to do their bidding. It's a good one to watch to understand how to combat it. I'll take you step by step through that in that video. Another video that I recommend watching is the one about the grey rock technique, which is a brilliant technique for dealing with bullying or narcissistic behaviour. With grey rock, you do exactly what it says on the tin. You behave with complete impassivity as a grey rock would. The grey rock just sits there. It doesn't interact. It doesn't answer back. It just is. To use the technique, you don't react to provocation, you set strong boundaries and only offer information, facts and figures that are necessary to do your job. Nothing else. If you've tried all that and the situation doesn't get resolved, I would strongly ask you to consider either finding another job within the same organisation or in another. From personal experience, I would also say to consider leaving sooner rather than later. Unfortunately, I stayed way too long in my abusive workplace and I've done a video on that. If you want to watch it, I'll leave it below. The longer you stay in an abusive workplace and don't do anything about it, especially if others have been turned against you, the worse you will feel. Your self-esteem, your self-worth and your confidence will all be dramatically affected, making it difficult to do what you need to do to get yourself out of the situation. In other words, to perform at an interview for a new role. One of the common things I see when dealing with people who've undergone workplace bullying is their sense of worthlessness. It's pervasive. They may have had a long and successful career, but after even a relatively short space of time being bullied by a narcissist, they believe themselves to be incompetent, worthless and useless in spite of the many years worth of evidence they have to the contrary. Again, I stayed way too long in my bullying workplace and was a shadow of my former self by the time I left. It took me years to recover and I don't want that for you. The wrap up. The impact of working in a toxic environment, especially one where other employees side with the bully, can have long lasting, far reaching negative consequences. However, Understanding the dynamics at play and why people do what they do is essential in understanding that it's not you that's the problem. Unless we're educated in narcissism, it's difficult to understand how anybody could behave in such a callous and manipulative way. To be honest, when you do know, it's still hard to get your head around. But as with most things, awareness is everything. Once you're aware, of what's going on and you can see the patterns because with narcissistic behaviour there are always the same patterns. You can keep reminding yourself that you're not the problem and put things in place to protect yourself. It also allows you to put steps in place to mitigate the effects on your physical and mental health and take positive steps towards a happier and healthier future. What next? If you have any words of wisdom on this topic or any questions you'd like me to answer, please leave them in the comments section below. I really do love interacting with you. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. It's very clear from the channel statistics that information on bullying and narcissism is by far my most popular. And I've got a whole host of things planned on this topic in the upcoming weeks. However, if there's anything in particular you'd like me to cover, again, leave it below and I'll add it to the list. Finally, as always, a huge thank you to everybody who stays until the very end and a massive thank you for all your support. It really does mean the world to me.